Thank you very much. We get a roll call. Here. Commissioner Hernandez. Here. Commissioner Seifert. Here. Chair Dickerson. Here. Uh, approval of the Planning Commission minutes of June 19th and 17th. Do we have the... Uh, and July. I'm sorry. July 17th. Chair, yeah. I'll have to uh, recuse myself from the July 17th meeting. I was absent. All right. Okay. So I move that we approve the Planning Commission minutes of June 19th and July 17th, 2019. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? I uh, abstain on the July 17th. I approve the 19th. Right. Thank you very much. Public comment period. Each member of the audience may address the commission on any subject within the commission's business. Each member of the audience and each subject is limited to discussion of three minutes or is otherwise directed by the chair. This is for items not already on the agenda. Does anyone want to discuss things not already on the agenda? No? Okay, then we'll move forward to the consent calendar. The consent calendar is approved with one motion. These items are read only on request of commission members. Should anyone, including members of the public, wish to discuss or disapprove any item, it must be dropped from the blanket motion and considered as a separate item. There are four items on, on the item list. Does anyone want to discuss or pull one of the items? No. Not I. No? Okay, then we're going to need a motion. I would move that we approve the consent calendar. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The motion carries. Okay, public hearing. Item number five. Ruiz Auto Transmission and Tire Conditional Use Permit at 328 North Blosser Road. we hear from staff. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ben Henny and I will be presenting the project for Ruiz Auto Transmission and Tires at 330 North Blosser Road. So the site is located in a commercial manufacturing district um, just off of Blosser Road in West Fessler. Um, across, you can see over here, is uh, Santa Barbara County boundaries. To the north is uh, single family residential, and to the to the east is Inglesia de Jesucristo. It's a church, and this is a big uh, parking lot for the church. The, the remainder of the uh, surrounding areas are also commercial manufacturing with uh, other automotive uses and uh, a con contractor building just across the street. So um, general the reason why we're here tonight is general automotive repair is a permitted use and only requires a business license to um, start up. However, as, as soon as uh, an applicant chooses to um, intensify their use, such as with um, automotive transmission repair or tile sales or service, a uh, conditional use permit is required, which is why we're here tonight. Oh, just on the previous slide, there are two entries into the site one off of North Blosser Road and the other one off of West Vessler. So this is a view of this uh, 6,500 square foot building, which is shared between two mechanics, Ruiz Auto Repair and Sanchez Auto Repair. So this is a view on North Blosser, looking east at the site, uh, looking at Ruiz Auto Repair, and then off, off screen is Sanchez Auto Repair. This is a view looking south at the building on West Vessler. You can see one of the two entrances right here. This is the existing landscaping. This is looking uh, east towards the county um, west, excuse me, west towards uh, county, county land and looking at a existing automotive bay and the entryway. So this is looking north. You can see Sanchez Auto Repair over here. They have one service. Um, bay door, and there are three uh, service bay doors for Ruiz Auto Repair. Um, with this conditional use permit, uh, no repairs are permitted outside of the building, and all vehicles are to be parked in designated spaces. Drive aisles are to be kept free and clear of parked vehicles for fire, um, for the fire lane. And this is a view of the parking also looking north. So this is a view of the site plan. 
As you can see, these, the, these two northern tenant spaces are uh, for Ruiz Auto and Sanchez Auto is in this part that is not a part of the permit. Um, the, there's a condition uh, reducing the number of usable service bays as defined by the code um, in order to meet the parking requirements. So five total service bays will be permitted to be used, which um, counts as a space for one car to be repaired. So um, I'd, ideally, uh, Ruiz Auto would be allowed three service bays and Sancho, Sanchez Auto would be allowed two service bays. Um, the 15% landscaping requirement has been met. With that, uh, planning staff recommends that the Planning Commission by motion approve conditional use permit U2019-0006. Thank you very much. Any questions for staff at this time? I do, Chair. Thank you. Commissioner? <clears throat> so because of these, both of these businesses are at the same address, the CUP will affect that property. So both of the uh, re uh, the uh, tenants will have act will be able to do whatever we approve. Correct. Correct. It's it's tied to the land. Thank you. Further questions? Um, I have a quick question. The the um, the shift to heavy automotive repair use. Do we know what type of noise increase that might uh, that causes as far as uh, from from what it's currently at? Uh, Ryan Hostetter. So that's a good question for the applicant to talk about the noise levels for transmission service versus maybe tire versus other auto oil changes, which obviously is not very loud. So I would go to them to talk about, you know, what operations they're involved in and what's noisier. Okay, if you need a CUP for heavy automotive repair use, mm -hmm. what is that based on then? If it's not noise, why? Why is the, what is the differentiation sure. that causes us to have to look at this? It, it really is noise. Uh, that's one of the big factors. It's the heavier use, um, and it is in somewhat proximity to residential to the north, but then there's a large parking lot next door to here, and then all commercial to the south. So they are buffered from the residential because of the street in between Fessler there. Um, so they're actually in a, in a good place here because all the bays are facing a parking lot and there's nothing behind the parking lot but another parking lot. So that's a benefit for this particular site. So as far as the operations, I would ask the applicant about uh, what they're doing in there. Okay. I have a question for Seth. Besides noise, is there other things that we should be looking at? Because I thought the same thing. It mm -hmm. seemed that they were just building on the current business that is there. Mm -hmm. Sure. And dealing with different components and um, I'm going to say oil changes, there's um, hazardous materials involved. So we and essentially we route this through our fire department and so it gets a heavier review than something that would be a ministerial type of approval. So our building department is looking at it, our fire department is looking at it, public works is looking at it. They're adding another uh, business opportunity, so there could be more traffic involved with that, uh, more customer activity, so circulation and parking and things are also being reviewed by adding to that existing business. All right, thank you. Um, I'm sorry, I also I skipped an item. Um, disclosure of any commissioner communications. Have any commissioners had any communication? No. I haven't either, okay. Um, all right, then uh, why don't we hear from um, why don't we hear from the applicant if uh, if they care to have anything to say? Anything Is the applicant to say. here? Mr. Yeah. If you could come on up to the the podium. And if you could speak in the microphone, give your name and address for the uh, record, please. Fermin Ruiz, uh, 330 three North Plaza Road. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, do you have anything you want to add to the um, to, to what staff has, has reported to us? No, thank you. No, okay. Uh, could you answer the, the question that we had um, uh, by doing transmission repair, by doing tire uh, uh, tires as well? Uh, what type of things will you be doing? Will that increase 
um, noise levels uh, for for what you from what you currently do. Uh, no. It won't increase any noise levels? Yeah, my name is Antonio Castro and I want to speak with him because um, sure. he say uh, the, the noise and everything is the same because he has only like a, a, a little customers and not like a big traffic because he know he has established the uh, the business for a long time, work for a, like a dealers, the used cars, and he tried to to make appointments. He don't want to put a lot of cars in, uh, in, the, okay. in the parking lot or in, in the street because he know about you know, the regulations. And, and, and is there any type of new specialized power equipment that's used for doing transmissions that might be louder than the things that he currently uses? For the transmission, uh, he used the, only the, the bench, the workbench, and the, the only machine he used now is for the, the tires services. They are, uh, you know, for the balancing and the replace for the rim, the tire, but no big machine, no big noise because okay. he get a brand new, like, appointment. Okay. And uh, is ready to use because he is waiting for the, the permit. Thank you. Further questions? No. Sir? No. Thank you very much, sir. Um, is there any um, is there any communication from the public regarding this? No, and nothing from the public. Okay, um, so uh, we'll go ahead and bring this close the public uh, hearing portion and bring it back to the commission. Uh, any discussions or motions? I, I would like to add that um, I was a uh, a customer of Pine with a Y for many years, and that was a transmission shop that was located about a block away. So it is a location that has had tr transmission shops before. So, I'm, and I used to have to use it quite often, actually. Yeah, it seems like a very traditional area for, for that type of service for yes. our community, so. Um, further discussions? No, I would entertain a motion. I move that we approve Rees Auto Transmission and Tire Conditional Use Permit at 328 North Brosser Road. I second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Good luck, gentlemen. Thank you. Buena suerte. Yeah. Item number six, Verizon conditional use permit at 516 South Oakley Avenue. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm Carol Zuzahenny, and I will also be presenting the project for uh, the Verizon Telecom Tower at South Oakley Avenue. So this is also in a commercial manufacturing uh, district. This is, um, let me get my pointer up. This is uh, located in the kind of the center of a commercial manufacturing district with uh, high, high density residential to the north. There's an existing apartment complex just north of the, the property. Um, this is a landlocked lot. So the, um, this has been used as a, an outdoor storage um, lot it's undeveloped for a towing company um, city motors towing which has an office in the front here so that the access to the lot is off south oakley through this this adjacent lot i also would like to point out that there is a an open space um, zoned kind of strip right along here on south railroad street it, this is the site of the old um, railroad right-of-way and to the north over here is a um, PG&E switching yard with a lot of large utility towers um, for electrical service. So just to give a little bit of background on how the city um, handles wireless communication facilities, um, in the administrative guidelines, um, the city encourages new facilities to locate in commercial or industrial zones and typically discourages new facilities in all residential zones. Um, while the city strongly encourages co-location on existing poles, buildings, or other structures, the applicant has provided a written analysis explaining the reasons why alternative locations for a macro cell tower such as this or small cells, which are typically on top of existing wooden poles, 
uh, power poles were not pursued. So the applicant is here tonight and uh, will be able to answer any questions regarding alternate locations or designs for this project. We're, 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 not, we're not done yet. I just <laughs> was mentioning. Yeah, that would be a really short presentation. Yeah. So, so this is this is a, a view of the site plan. Off to the to the right here, or to the east, is the location of the Verizon lease area. Um, it's approximately 32 by 16 feet, and it's enclosed by a eight foot tall chain link enclosure for security purposes. There is also a 12 foot wide access easement that goes through that other parcel that I mentioned earlier. This is a, an aerial view, kind of showing the approximate location of where the, the site is, or the lease area is going to be put up. You can see the existing residential buildings over here, and there's a warehouse and an empty field down below. Are those apartments or are those is that what those are? I believe they're apartments. This is a view of the elevation um, for the original proposed 55 foot tall monopine off to the left here. So you can see the um, chain link enclosure and uh, building that's adjacent to the east for that warehouse. And this is a view uh, from the street from South Oakley. This is the apartment building that we were just mentioning and the office for the towing yard. You can see in the background over there, there's a little um, tip of the 55 foot tall monopine. So the maximum height in the commercial manufacturing zone is 40 feet, and any structure that is higher than 18 feet requires a conditional use permit when it's adjacent to a residential zoning district, such as this location. Um, so the original proposal did show a 55 foot tall monopine, but due to staff concerns about visual impacts, such as of such a large structure, the applicant agreed to reduce the height the proposed tower to conform with the height requirements for the district. Um, despite the reduction in height, staff still remains concerned about the visual impacts of a, such a tall structure in this location specifically. Um, there are, it's typically composed of one and two story buildings and there are relatively few mature trees in the area. So there's a little opportunity to blend the new facility into the background with a monopine, for example, a faux tree. Um, as a result of this discussion with staff, the applicant has provided three additional design alternatives for the Planning Commission's consideration. So we'll go through those in just a second. This is just a, another view of the original proposal for the 55 foot tall monopine from varying vantage points um, around the site. So on, on top is the existing, so it's before and after. So it's right, right here. So this is alternative number one. It's a 40 foot tall water, water tower design before and after. Um, a similar water tower design was approved on a site on North Ben Wiley Avenue in 2015. So here is alternative number two. This is a 40 foot tall uncamouflaged monopole. So it's just the antennas and the pole without any um, kind of screening. Um, this is staff's recommendation as it blends in with the other utility poles in this particular location and kind of disappears into the background. So it's right, right there. And then third is an architectural tower structure. It's architecturally designed, so it could be made to look like a clock tower or other such um, city, other such architectural features you find in a city. <coughs> So just going back to kind of reiterate, this is the original view of the 55 foot tall monopine. It's looking at, from looking west from South Railroad Avenue at the project. This is actually a picture of the previously approved water tower on North Fort Wiley. And then this is a, a view of the uncamouflaged monopole. And finally, this is alternative number three, the architectural tower. Um, so to kind of wrap everything up, we've gone through the original 55 foot tall monopine proposal and a few potential design alternatives. Staff's recommendation is for the shorter 40 foot tall plane pole and antennas for this particular location as a slower design allows the tower to disappear into the background. 
With that, staff recommends that the Planning Commission, by motion, approve conditional use permit U-2019-0003 with modifications to the proposed tower design showing a 40-foot tall on camouflage monopole. Staff and the applicant are available for questions. Now? Yes. Okay. We have questions for staff at this time? Yeah. We can hear from the applicant. If you could state your name and address for the record, please. Good evening, Tricia Knight, representing Verizon Wireless, 123 Seacliff Drive, Pismo Beach. And staff did a great job. We've been working at this project for a while, and I agree with all the conditions of approval and their recommendation, but I'm here to answer any questions that you might have specifically. Thank you. Questions? Commissioner uh, Seifert. Thank you, Commissioner uh, Chair. Um, the reduction in height, mm -hmm. um, that's not an issue for the transmission of the whatever you're sending out there? It's not an issue. Um, what, what, what I think engineer was just speaking to you prior to coming to this hearing, so the way that it really works right now is that that 50-foot tower would, of course, propagate further, meaning that um, the capacity issues that we sometimes have or um, calls being dropped or uh, data speeds and that sort of thing would be better covered by the 50-foot tower. But from a visual perspective, I think with that residential neighborhood being immediately adjacent, um, the engineer did agree that it would be acceptable and that it's not going to be the best of the best, but I think it's a good compromise. So are you going to come back to us and you're going to have another location for another tower because you didn't get the transmission uh, that you needed here? You know, I wish I had a crystal ball. Unfortunately, I don't. I don't know. I think I, what they do is they build and then they see what that handles, the traffic. And then they analyze that at another time, and we may come back before you. But as of now, this, this covers very well. You have some information in your staff report about that area to be covered, and it does a pretty darn good job. Thank you. Uh -huh. Further questions? No? Commissioner? Um, when, uh, when past projects have come forward to us uh, a few years ago, uh, um, one of the things we talked about was moving away from towers and moving towards ODAS. They, they are talking. They do. The staff does talk about that in the in the staff report. Um, and I do know that there's a a larger cost initial initial upfront cost uh, on it. But uh, the question I had was when it was originally asked, it was the concept was trying to meet the the needs you were looking for, um, and I think it was. It was asked for approximately six small cell facilities. Well, now that we're dropping to 40 feet, where you don't your capacity isn't quite as much, is it possible that these six or maybe eight would do the same job as as the 40 foot uh, would do? So then we uh, uh, wouldn't have any of the visual. Um, the visual impact. Um, well, the way that it works, and I think you may or may not have some exhibits of small cells in your packet, but um, so yes, you can. But typically, small cell facilities are going to be located very, very close to the user. So that all that residential neighborhood that you saw on the second slide, those are going to be you know in the right of way, um, very adjacent to neighbors, and and they they function well. Uh, two issues come up um, with respect to those small cells is they're the first to go down in an emergency um, because they don't have a huge backup battery. It lasts for maybe an hour or so. Um, and they're the first to be overwhelmed. So the facility that, if you choose to approve it tonight, is really going to be able to, uh, Verizon in the event of a true emergency, is going to bring in a generator, keep that cell site going for emergency services or us if we need it. And um, so it's going to do a better job. Uh, small cells serve their purpose, there's no question, uh, but I think those, if the, uh, we were to come back and ask for some infill, that would be most likely, but most likely less, less of them. So it would take six to eight in that whole residential neighborhood versus us staying in the commercial manufacturing zone that we are now and sort of blending in. I hope that helps to answer your question. Yeah, each, each of the units basically has uh, a, a small box on a tower and then a corresponding uh, box uh, at the base. Is that correct? A slightly larger? Correct. So there is a good example of one up there now. And so what they look like is that antenna at the top of the pole and then different um, varying degrees of uh, radios and um, backup equipment on the pole. So um, it, once again, they're also 100% visible, which is you know another aspect of it. But this is, I believe, the one on the left-hand side is right outside of school. So it just becomes a little bit more um, uh, in your face, if you will, versus us trying to stay in the commercial manufacturing zone and covering those same residential areas from the outside in. Yeah, if that makes sense. But it is fair to say that. A tower can be seen by all 
this unit can be seen by the guy going driving by it. Yes, that is correct. The car right there can look up yeah. and see it. They blend pretty well, but right. Yeah. And the reason I guess you know what is, has been frustrating for me over the last few years on these is that, for instance, I know that Santa Barbara and uh, Montecito, they have ODAS systems. They have fewer customers, and yet the expense was put into their community to put those in there. With more customers, why don't we deserve the same technology that Santa Barbara and Montecito have? Great question. Thank you. What I will say is it's coming. Uh, that technology isn't going anywhere. Those small cells are really the next bastion. You know, the, you're looking at right now is where there's tr still truly a hole. And so those aren't few and far between. We can almost all hold a call almost anywhere within city limits for the most part. So this technology is not going anywhere. Um, the reason maybe that Santa Barbara got covered was because of the mudslides originally. Um, who knows it's exactly? Pre pre mudslide. Pre mudslide. Mm -hmm. I know that they had a lot of work going on during the mudslides. So, but it is coming. This technology. All the carriers right now, um, T-Mobile and Sprint, are going to be merging. This is the next wave that you're going to, going to see, and they come in large numbers. I will prepare you for that. Well, well then that, that opens the question as to yeah. why why should we approve an old technology that is arguably an eyesore that probably will not be taken down when you yourself admit. It's coming. It will be here. This is what they're going to use. This is old tech, and we could cover it with the new tech. The, you would be denying this project, assuming that that is going to come in the very near future, which I cannot promise you. Um, I don't know when a, a company is going to release a business plan and a financial forecast that's going to allow for these to be built. Right now, this is, you know, we've leased, we've looked at the construction feasibility, we've gone through the zoning process. You're going to be much closer here. Uh, with something, to, no matter which design you decide. If there, once it gets turned on, that's the only way you can decide where that need is going to be. If the residences in that immediately adjacent neighborhood are, um, are have lack of service or lack of data or lack of speed, that's when you're going to see the applications for these to infill that. Uh, but I can't tell you when that might be. And so this is what's available now and before us. Um, and that is something that is going to come. I just can't tell you when. Budgetarily, it's hard to tell when the carriers are going right now. They're at a slow crawl. I'm not I, quite sure why. One last question, of based course. on what you just said, isn't would, wouldn't it be fair to say that if we approved what is in essence a band aid, that it's just going to kick that can down the road? Whereas if we don't approve it, then perhaps Verizon will go back and look at it and go, okay, I guess we have to do it here if we're going to. I mean, if if we all of a sudden produce, give you the capacity, well, you don't need to boost the capacity for a number of years or however long a period of time. If we don't give you the capacity, but there is an alternative that we would accept, right. then it would sort of force, force your hand, wouldn't it? This is a coverage site, not a capacity site. Those are capacity, not coverage. So they differ completely. This is putting more lanes on the highway. The one before you is actually adding a highway. So the capacity is always going to be an issue. Everyone in this room, I can guarantee you, either has something they're relying on or going to rely on. And so that capacity is never going to go away. It's only going to increase exponentially over the years. And so right now we're filling a hole. That is going to come because we all keep using the devices. We all need the same connectivity. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The, the emergency backup generator, yes. how long does that last? Uh, so the batteries that are, uh, if you choose to approve the project, that are here uh, in the equipment area last approximately a day or so. Um, so in the event that there was a true emergency and that needed to go longer, Verizon pulls up a generator and that can go for, I believe, up to a week. So 12 hours or 24 hours? The batteries. The one, the emergency backup generator oh, that oh, is oh, part it could, of the project. It could go for a week, so seven days. Okay. The one proposed, or or, or the, the or the one that you would pull up in case the one went, that we would pull up. So it'd be twenty four hours, correct. and then you would pull something else up. Correct. The emergency services in Santa Maria do use Verizon's network, and so it's pretty poignant when that if a true emergency was to happen, Verizon makes those available, and the technicians in the area, which is in San Luis Obispo start deploying those generators. Hopefully we won't need them, but they're available if they are. And 
I just want to comment that you should take this back to Verizon is that in 2015 we were having the same conversation with the Verizon representative. I sat on the planning commission and we said next time you bring a project make sure it's owed as. They promised, they said yes, that's what we're going to do. Please approve this one because it's once again adding a highway, not a lane. Mm -hmm. We approved it based on the promise that Verizon was going to come forward and provide ODAS next time. Here we are again on another project being told the same thing. And I think that's the message that the commissioner for myself and Commissioner Dickerson are trying to convey to you to take back to Verizon because we keep being told the same thing here three years, four years later. Understood. Understood. We all understand though, that these are outside homes and businesses and schools, right? That, that there's right. two different animals, right? We're talking commercial manufacturing zone where we're purely allowed, and then a right away in a residential zone where we're not. Right. So that's apple. It's not apples and apples, and so that could be some of the limiting factors. If I understand correctly, right, Carol, that it is not allowed in residential zones. It's discouraged, but not necessarily prohibited. So, you know, we're going with the guidelines that we have now, so maybe also opening up the guidelines a little bit so that we could be encouraged to maybe pursue that I'd ask in, if you look at a guideline and it tells you not to go there or it's discouraged, then maybe looking at those guidelines and opening them up a little bit so that when someone comes to look at them, they have a way to get there. Okay. Further questions? Thank you very much. Do we have any uh, communication from the public? Oh. I, if I can add, um, also, the city is um, currently doing a lot of research on small wireless facilities. Um, other jurisdictions are producing ordinances that talk about design and location, and but right now uh, the FCC is in the middle of uh, working on what basically what we can and cannot require on these facilities and it's in flux right now so we're in the middle of um, drafting language and we're also working closely with public works department on um, because a lot of these small cell facilities are being put on city infrastructure on our light poles and they they would go everywhere so that's an issue that the city has to think about and um, would the companies be leasing space from the city and at what cost? And there's a lot of complexities also involved with small cell wireless that we're actively working on uh, as we speak. But wasn't the one that we approved in 2015, weren't they getting a lease from the city because it was in the city park? I'm not familiar with that one. I'm the one sorry, that looks like a clock? No? No, I'm okay. sorry. We, we just did one. We, uh, we just did one on Donovan, and that didn't <clears throat> really come out like we thought, like I thought. I thought it was the, what you guys told us it was going to look like, and it really didn't look like that. What is it? Just out of curiosity. There's a big box on the bottom and a big thing on the top, mm -hmm. and it was supposed to be kind of like hidden, not really visible. It's pretty visible. Yeah, it didn't really work out too well, at, at least in my opinion. I think that was the last one. Further comments, questions for the applicant? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, with uh, nothing from the public, I'm going to close the public uh, hearing portion of this and bring it back to commissioners for comments. Mr. Well, Seifert. I, I Seifert. hear what you guys are saying on the, uh, we have been asking that for this particular thing for a long time. I did drive by this site today and it, I know we've, we've had them what, on Ben Wiley, we've had them on Donovan, and these are all in residential areas. And um, I do agree with the uh, Otis system, and we have been asking for it for, for a long, long time and told that we're going to get it. Um, I'm, the, the, the difference on this one is I went by the property, and, and there's so many transmission lines in that area, I don't believe that this is really going to affect us as far as a city. Um, it, it's, it is a commercial area and there's a huge amount of PG&E lines, Verizon lines and everything else or what the old, the old style Verizon lines. Um, so I'm kind of torn with you on that. I, I understand where you're going and, and, and I do agree that I would much rather see the smaller stuff because the, the, even though we have quite a few of those uh, pine trees, they're not trees. 
I mean, you, it, we have to have them. They're a convenience. They, they help hide the pole. Um, but in this particular area, it, it, it certainly isn't as bad as some of the other ones that we have actually have installed. I, you know what? We, we just talked about the airport. Didn't we approve one at the airport? In that little, uh, in the parking lot, we gave them a little spot, and they were supposed to, they were supposed to build another tower right there. And that was that wasn't that long ago. Um, so I, I could go either way on this one, uh, as far as I'm concerned. I, I don't think it's a terrible place to have that particular monopole. Did you pick which one you like? I like the plain one. Uh, you know, the, going to the the tree, there's no trees in that area. Uh, there's, I mean, it is a commercial lot. The 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 PG&E lines are, I mean, there's a lot of them. You, you go over there, there's a lot of lines everywhere. So I think this thing would go up, and I don't think you would ever even notice that it was there, um, other than what was already there. Uh, it it just doesn't seem like it's a terrible location to me. Commissioner Hernandez. Yeah, I believe because of the location, the property it's on, it doesn't have an adverse upon the adjacent property. And also, it's not more impact impactful than the existing PG&E pole towers that are already in the vicinity. I don't think it'd make a difference. I think keeping the pole as is, simple without, you know, the tower or, or the clock would be would just blend in because of the location of the property however i would in the future like to see a proposal for odas so that we could have more infill coverage and capacity thank you very much commissioner blanco uh, <clears throat> yeah i i, <clears throat> I agree that uh, i think the monopole makes a lot of sense here just with the surrounding area um I think the, the height reduction in the height from 55 feet certainly is a good compromise as well. Um, I'd, I'd be curious about the size of the pole. I mean, I couldn't tell from the drawings that were in here how big the diameter is at the base versus the top. I had no real feel for I mean, how big is this thing. So I'd like to have clarification on just the size of it would be good to know. Uh, um, um, but otherwise, it seems like a good fit. I, I, I agree in the area that it's in it blends pretty well with the transmission lines and all the other utilities that are there um, and it's certainly you know tree it doesn't blend in there because there are no other pine trees in the area it just doesn't blend uh, we could look at a tower of some sort or a water tower but I don't think that's a good fit in that particular location so I, I do think the monopole uh, makes sense and I don't have the history here to 2015 so I don't know what was promised but I certainly feel like if something was promised wasn't delivered that is a disappointment and I think moving forward um, that we ought to definitely be looking at that a little closer in the future. Um, I realize technology is driven by demand or what have you but uh, nevertheless I think if uh, if it's something that the city wants to demand I think it's it's a fair request and I think you know uh, the providers will have to adapt to that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I, I basically, uh, uh, I do agree with, with the other commissioners. Um, Commissioner Seifer, I understand, you know, you're torn one way or the other. It's kind of a split thing. Uh, we go back to 2015 as uh, Commissioner Hernandez brought up and we were made certain promises or it, it was implied that this is the last one where they're gonna go towards the ODAS system. Um, and then here we are again. Um, it, there's something inherently a little unfair for me anyway you know i do understand that 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 the, this pole in that area probably fits it certainly fits better you know it's more appropriate architecturally uh than a water tower or or a tower or something along that line i mean i i get that but there's something inherently unfair that because some place is not nice to begin with, we can go ahead and make it a little bit less nice and we get away with it. You know, we're not looking to improve the people's situation around, the, around that tower. It's not even staying the same. It's just a little less nice. And, it, and that's how all those, those lines got there and stayed there. And there's something a little unfair to the residents there about that and and that just makes me uncomfortable um 
if uh, if the commission cares to to, to vote uh, approve this, then um, I would say that that uh, unadorned poll is is probably the the, the way to go for it. Um, um, I I can't I can't uh, um, uh, support this for the reasons that I've given, um, but I certainly understand if the other if if uh, if you others uh, do. Um, for me, it's just. Uh, between what we're doing to that neighborhood, even just a little bit more, and the promises that have previously been made, and other communities being able to be given that, but not us. I just think at some point you have to draw the line, and for me, that's today. So I, I get it, you know. So is there something that you'd ask from the applicant? Yeah, I would ask that we deny this, and that they go back, and that they put an ODAS system together. And we just start moving forward as a community in that direction. Um, and, you know, I, staff I know has looked into that, and I think that they could work with staff um, to, uh, to go that direction. So I'm just looking, I, I would be looking for not putting any more towers in, be it poles of, of this kind or, or monopines or anything else. But, um, and I think that the, the technology is there, and for me, the admission uh, by their own representative that that's the technology that everything is moving forward to, why do we want to stick ourselves with a piece of old hardware now when in another couple of years from now it's what everybody's going to be using, and so it's just going to be another big pole there in that neighborhood or near that neighborhood. Um, and, you know, we're talking about in the neighborhood, around the neighborhood, man, you can see these things from quite a, while, quite a ways away, especially if there is no other coverage. Um, and so it really, it, it becomes a visual impact for, for quite a distance. And that just makes our community just a little bit less nice. And right now, I think we're trying to get it so the community looks nice. It's just, a, it goes one step back for me. That's all. So my question is, so you're not proposed, you're not giving a counter to the applicant for them to consider. You're just saying deny, not continue. Uh, once again, I, I'm, I am not a supporter of, of, the, of the tower. I, I am a supporter of going more towards the ODAS system or, or something like that or some variation thereof. Further? I don't know. It's a tough one. Uh, the, the the area definitely would. Um, I don't think they would notice this poll, but I can see your. Uh, I, I've been involved in this conversation too. I don't. I don't remember. I don't think I was here in '15, but I've had many of these conversations with Verizon, and I got to say that you you are correct. Each time they come to us, they say we're going to have a better system next time we come, and we're not seeing that this time either. So. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to asking them to go back and, and give us some options uh, with, with maybe a different system or, uh, you know, we're, we're not, I'm not a technology guy. So the difference between the, uh, uh, the, the making more, more roads or more, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe, I, we I know ask, that maybe we can have them work with staff and come when, back. When I'm working, I want my yeah, phone to work. Fair. I don't want to get dropped off, that kind of thing. So. But I, I'm, I'm willing to, to at least ask them to, you know, yeah. they have said uh, to us a number of times they're going to come back with different systems. So I would, I would be willing to say I'd like to see something else, you know, come back with some Fair. alternatives. The applicant wanted to speak. Go ahead. That's appropriate. Thank you. Um, so as Carol was saying, and, and, and I'm not sure who the lady is adjacent to you, but um, so... <laughs> The small cell technology, as well as your own guidelines and ordinances, don't allow for what you're asking. So in order to do the same job that this does, it has to be adjacent to resident, in residential zones, adjacent to schools. Your guidelines and the FCC um, regulations that she's referring to that they're looking into right now, um, I'm going to formulate, if I understand it correctly, some sort of guidelines for the applicant but right now what you're asking is not allowed by your guidelines. It, it, it's, it's allowed, but it's, it's discouraged. But if we're telling you that that's what we'd like, then it's actually encouraged 
by us. Is that accurate? Oh, okay. I mean, could, could they put something? Could they put ODAS systems in residential areas? If that's if that's the direction we want to push towards? Yeah, certainly. There you go. Okay. So I guess the question is, do you want a continuance, or I'll do you want a continuance? To yeah, I think we need to look at this from a legal standpoint. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'd make a motion to continue Verizon conditional use permit at 516 South Oakley Avenue, permit number U2019-003, continuous to a, do we want to put a date? Yes. Uh, let's do, is it two weeks? Two weeks? October no. 2nd is the next meeting. Our next meeting. meeting would be October 2nd, okay. to date certain, yeah. unless you want it, we could re-notice and give yeah, you more October time. October 2nd. Sounds okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. We'll continue it to the October 2nd Planning Commission meeting. And, and, and would that be looking for alternatives? We are looking for alternatives other than what you've presented tonight and not just on that poll, but alternative technology. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you very much. <clears throat> Item number seven, splash and dash plan development permit at 1703 South Bradley Road. We hear from staff. We're gonna have a quick change over here, one moment. Does that work over here? Working. Thank you, commissioners, members of the public, Ryan Hostetter, planning manager. Before you is the splash and dash project with is a part of the Enos Rancho specific plan area. So I'll go through a little bit of background here and then um, go into some slides that discuss the proposal. So this is a part of the Enos Ranch specific plan area and this is in the auto overlay zone portion which is uh, highlighted in red here for you. It was uh, area four and area seven, approximately a little over 26 acres of the Enos Ranch overall project. Let me, anything's going on here. And the application before you is for a car wash. And within the auto overlay area, it's um, 1.6 acres of that approximately 26 acre area. It is just south of Meehan, that's Meehan Street, just um, to the northeast. The curve um, street above is Meehan and Bradley to the east. That's Costco right there down to the east. So the project application is a car wash. It is, I'm gonna get my highlighter here. Uh, here is the site plan. This is Meehan Street, just up here to the north. And it is generally a self-serve car wash. However, there's an option for the users to get a detail option. So uh, there are two entrances here off of Meehan. Currently there's no me median in Meehan, so there's full access to both of those entrances. But the idea is one would come in, it's sort of a one-way type system. So you would come in here and go through a, a check-in area and then um, you would get funneled in through this tunnel where your car would get washed. You could alternatively take a detour. I believe that's here you could go through a detail tunnel if you want your car detailed. So that's an additional layer, but, but somebody to, who chooses to exit early could go out here or just the regular car wash would exit here. If you look above, there are 16 parking spaces. It complies with the parking requirements for the square footage of the use, and uh, there's a caretaker unit also as a part of this project, which I'll show you on the floor plans in a moment. The 
um, vacuums are also in these parking spaces as well. So it's a pretty tight system here on this site. And the floor plans, I'll go through here. It's, it's a two-story building. So the, uh, we'll start the downstairs. There's the uh, covered detail area. There's a customer waiting area and um, a small office area as well. This is, the, this is the actual tunnel that the car wash would go through. And then this is the additional detail area. The upstairs square footage doesn't actually cover the entire lower level, so it's open to below for a large portion. And there's a 1,000, approximately 1,000 square foot caretaker unit, and then a mezzanine area for customers to wait upstairs as well. Here, that's a little bit over 1,000 square feet. So this is a perspective of the proposed architecture and site layout. It is a modern design. It's designed this way to match or mimic the auto dealerships next door, which are all going in a pretty modern design. The height limit is 45 feet for the site, and that includes the tower. These are uh, approximately 40 feet, I believe. Here are some elevations of the site. This would be um, the north exterior elevation. So this would be from Meehan looking at the, at the project. And then the south elevation. Uh, so this would be your view from Honda. This is actually where the queue would come in, would be on this, this side here. The caretaker unit is in this gray area upstairs here. And again, this is um, your side elevations, the narrower sides. So this would be uh, your west elevation. This would be facing the, this should be actually, well, this should, west should be facing the school. Um, however, I think that tower was on the school side of the project. So we'll have to ask the applicant. Um, but the tower is proposed to be in a water tower type design. It is uh, 45 feet uh, per the conditions of approval. So we're asking it to be at 45. Yeah, actually I was wrong. This is the school side because this is where the cars are queuing to enter. There's the check-in area right there. So Honda would be off to our right here. So before we close, uh, I wanted to mention we received a letter from the applicant. And um, actually, um, I almost wish we would have had a, uh, the opportunity to go through with these with the applicant ahead of time because we agree with these items on here. Um, and I'll go through them with you. Um, the first item would be condition number four, which talks about what could be on the water tower. And the intent of the condition is that it's not used for commercial signage. But if it denotes city of Santa Maria, that would be fine. We wouldn't count that as a is this business type sign. Um, so we're okay with that. Um, yes, question. I was always told we incorporated in 1905. We'll have to make sure that the date is correct. Thank you. <laughs> Condition number five, we agree, it's the commission that is uh, approving the colors and materials for the project, so we would rely on the commission's decision for um, consistency when we're reviewing the building permit. We'll make sure it matches what the planning commission approved. Condition number seven, uh, the applicant, applicant is correct. This was, um, a lot. there was a lot of discussion about parking with the campus review and a specific condition was worked out through, through those permits and uh, we neglected to make sure that it matched. So 
the proposed language in the applicant's letter here, number seven, matches what was approved on all of the other auto um, parking requirements. So um, I double checked the language. It's identical to what we did for Honda and Toyota in the campus. And the last one I'm going to defer to Public Works. It was a question about um, the fees for that one. Mr. Commissioner, uh, Commission, the um, the request is is, a, is we're okay with that, with with the with the change. Yeah, it was done in error. Thanks for admitting that. It does happen. Yeah, we just had that happen on one of our jobs. So that concludes our presentation. With that, we our um, staff is accepting acceptable to all of the proposed changes in the letter. And with that, we would recommend uh, approval of the application to the commission. Questions for staff at this time? I do, Chair. Sir, I believe in study session. Um, we were concerned with the exiting on Meehan and that uh, that one exit that's really close to the corner we had talked about a write out um, did we look into that are we correct are we wrong what what do you what do you see on that mr. chair commission commissioner Seifert um, we did analyze that and as part of the the tentative map that was prepared for this for the Enos Ranch development, as you'll see, as we went in the aerial, there were driveways that were, because the applicant went to the effort to, um, and I wasn't part of the tentative map process, but the commission has seen that. And they prepared, when they, when they prepared their conceptual designs, the applicant was um, very active and, and wanting to identify the locations of the driveways. A study was completed and it didn't, um, it wasn't an item that was necessarily a concern of the of the of staff and and I will say commission at the time. Um, looking at, at the layout, it does appear that a majority of the vehicles leaving and exiting the site will be will be on the westerly boundary. And um, however, if the commission has concerns and would like to look at options. Westerly or easterly? Because because the way this whole thing funnels and channels, don't you exit here and then slip out on the east? As I'm looking at it, though, and correct me if I'm wrong, as you exit the tunnel, I believe the majority will exit on the along the westerly boundary. Where do they exit? Right here. Majority, yeah. More than majority. I would say 70 to 80 percent. Mm -hmm. Exit the car wash on the western side. Oh, on I see. Okay. I believe this was more for uh, customers coming out of the detailing area, uh, um, was so that they yeah. would have an option to use that driveway. And then the folks coming out of here, assuming they weren't going to the vacuums immediately after, um, would just go out uh, that way. And I believe there's an there's also a driveway on, along the the easterly boundary. Uh, it's happened to me. If you're in line, you forget your wallet, like, okay, we need to exit the, the production line. And so so you're okay. okay with the exiting uh, right, left? I mean, as drawn, I, it's, it's just a regular entrance or exit? I, I feel confident because staff had looked at it before, as well as the commission, uh, because the, the, the conceptuals were laid out, the driveways were already there. Typically, that doesn't happen. Driveways are established at the time of the PD, but in this case, uh, um, a thorough look was, a, a thorough analysis was conducted by staff, and um, had that uh, raised concerns, I believe there, I strongly believe that there would have been conditions established at the tentative map condition process. Thank you. In, in fairness, we, uh, the, they did not, they did not have real life examples of how how traffic is impacting that that four-way intersection now on Meehan. Um, I mean, I'm a, I'm a little less worried about it now that 
it was pointed out that the majority of traffic is going to come out on the on the western side of the property. But but even so, um, there, I drive there quite a bit, and there's there's always a, a little bit of a stack. And if we're talking about a car wash, you're going to have a. Likewise, I, I live in the general area, and and uh, I, I frequent Meehan often. Mm -hmm. And as I drive through there, I see that the driveways, and uh, I am I'm a customer, so I would likely go out. On the west of the country. Okay. Further questions of staff at this time, sir? Yeah. So I, I believe that there is no parking on Meehan currently. There's no plan for parking on street parking on Meehan Street. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Commissioner Blanco, that's correct. Okay. Um, so the side distance. Uh, forgive me. The side distances will be will be wide open. Okay. Um, the other question I had was related to the tower. I, I thought at one point the tower was going to have a function. Is it just an architectural feature or is it planned to be something more than that now or in the future? I believe it was proposed for a potential cell project, but it, it's an architectural feature and we can ask the applicant to weigh in on that. Now or when, when the applicant oh, when the applicant speaks. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> that's it. Thank you. Um, following up on the no parking, so so will it actually be red stripped? I mean, is it going to be a no parking along Meehan, or is it just assumed that we're not going to have any parking? But then, if parking shows up, there's nothing we can do about it. And Com Commissioner Dickerson it is is presently posted no parking. Okay, and it will continue then. Okay. Any further questions, staff? Actually, sorry, one more. I apologize. Yeah. Sorry, I, I forgot I had one more question. So, like Columbo. <laughs> on the north side here, I believe that's going to be the future Toyota dealership. Um, what is the plan for access off of Meehan for them? And is, I mean, has that been reviewed in terms of compatibility with these driveways and the idea of maybe not allowing certain lefts out? <laughs> You know, I, I, I thought I saw that on a site plan here somewhere, at least the layout, so I don't know how closely that's been reviewed to see if there's any issues there. Oops. Oh, here we go. They're in, so all the driveways are installed. So these align right here. There's one here, I believe that's where the new one's gonna, or I'm looking to Public Works to help me out here. <laughs> but all the driveways are installed already. So here's one, here's one. There's two on this side for Toyota. Honda's here, here, and I believe there's access also here. You can almost see the aprons there. I think one might be hiding under our line here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, with no further questions of staff, why don't we hear from the applicant? <coughs> Sir, if you could state your name and address for the record. Good evening. My name is Will Roth. I'm an architect at Tenebra Studio. Our address is 539 Marsh Street in San Luis Obispo. Thank you, Ryan, for that presentation. Um, commissioners, I'm happy to talk about the project itself as a whole and to walk you through the procession going through there, but as you've seen it in the study session, um, feel free to ask me questions and I can elaborate further. What I'd like to do is discuss the two issues that kind of were brought up during the study session, one being the exiting out of there and the other being the water tower element. So um, as mentioned for the parking and for the exiting, it's going to be about 80% of the users coming out of that space are going to exit out on the western side of the property. So if you look at the number of um, users of the site, the people that are actually going to be exiting out of that eastern side is going to be very minimal. So I think that kind of alleviates any issues we might have with um, the parking coming out directly on the corner of Meehan and Bradley there. The other issue that was brought up was the water tower. And 
That is something that we're hoping is a branding element for Splash and Dash. The Splash and Dash on Donovan has a water tower as well, so we're trying to keep that character as um, an element that distinguishes all of our car washes. I heard and we listened to the thought that it didn't seem to be modern enough and fit in with the architecture of the building. So what we're proposing is with detailing and scaling of the water tower itself that we make that a modern architectural element, not some farmhouse water tower that you see out in the middle of the field. So those are the two major things I wanted to talk about. Feel free to ask me any questions if you have them. Thank you. Is there a picture of the water tower? Of the new and proposed water tower? We did show a precedent image of a water tower in our application, I think you saw it at the study session, but we have not put together a full rendering of what that tower looks like. We're hoping that we can work that through at the staff level. Okay. Mr. Blanc, did you have a question regarding the cell tower? Well, the question was for future use of the tower, I guess. It, it seems like you've clarified that, that, that it's at this point not intended, or can you can we hear about any potential future No, use? I think we're still looking at future options for that water tower, but the main purpose of it is to be an architectural feature for the car wash itself. Okay, thank you. Okay. Commissioner Seifert. Judging from our hearing a few minutes ago, you may want to think about adding a cell tower element. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, we're trying to eliminate the towers in the city. <clears throat> I'm sure that would be a good location for one. Um, you've heard pluses and minuses on your tower design. Right. So if it was to incorporate a cell tower, it might be a little easier to sell. Absolutely. Basically. And that's something we're definitely pursuing. But you, you don't have the new design? Of the water tower? Mm -hmm. No, we just have what was proposed in the study session. And again, we were hoping to refine that design at a staff level and to um, bring that up to a more modern design. Thanks. Commissioner Hernandez? Has staff seen the proposed water tower? This is all that we have. Further questions? No. Thank you very much. Is there any uh, communication from, um, you know, I did it again. Um, has there been any uh, communications uh, by commissioners? I have had none. Applicants? No? No. All right. Just officially it's out there. Um, and um, is there any communication from the public? No? Okay. Then we'll go ahead and bring it back to the commission for uh, discussion and, uh, and whatnot. Commissioner Blanco. Um, so I, th I think the project looks really nice. I, I like the colors and the fact that it's going to match with the dealership. Um, sounds like circulation was well thought out internally. Um, I, I still, you know, externally on the road, it's going to be sort of wait and see, to be quite honest with you, is kind of the way I feel about it. I don't know that there's anything I, that I can think of that could be done right now. Um, you know, I s certainly thought maybe a median in there to block left turns out, but I think it would also be problematic for, for Toyota because then you're going to cut off and restrict their access too. So um, <clears throat> I, I'd hate for the city to come back and have to do a fix on Meehan Street, and I think that that's what happened on Bradley with Costco. You know, then, then having the taxpayers have to foot the bill for, for something that should have been addressed by the developer. Um, so I'm, I'm a little leery of that, uh, but I don't know that the site design could be, could accommodate that right now. Um, and like I said, I think the site layout is good. Um, I, I did hear you, Ryan, say at the beginning of your presentation, currently there's no median in Meehan Street. It, it almost makes it sound like there could be a median in the future and realize that anything could happen in public right away in the future if there's an issue. Um, Given the development, the school, the dealerships, the residential, this whole area is going to be challenged with traffic. So um, I don't know that we can solve the problems with one specific project. I think it's going to be trying to, 
to think through things as they go. Um, and I, I'm glad we looked at this intersection closely and I, we got feedback from Public Works on it now, which is good. Um, but at least I think the site is accommodating uh, traffic in the street as best they can with the amount of stacking they have internally in storage. Um, at least there'll be opportunity for them to not be out in the street and be forced out because there's just no room internally. So, um, I, you know, that was my big concern was circulation because I thought the site design looked good. Um, but I think circulation right now is probably as good as we can do. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Seifert or Hernandez, whoever. Seifert. I'd be happy to go. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I'm still uh, the same as a uh, study session when I talked to you guys about my, my concerns. And, and um, we just had to, we approved a project on the south end of town and it crosses over into the county roads. And the county roads have a frontage road coming right next to the main road and it's a, just a mess. And when I see roads that are close to other roads, I get nervous about the rights. I, I, so I have concerns about Meehan, but um, we're, we're taking the public works uh, word for it that it's going to work. I know you guys have spent a lot of time looking at this thing, um, but I do see that as a problematic intersection. And um, you, it may have to be addressed in the future. Uh, we'll see. Uh, People tend to go, if they get frustrated with traffic, they're definitely going to turn down here and try to get out that way. Whether they're going to try to turn left, I don't know. So uh, that, that would be my concern. Uh, the project itself, I've, I've liked it. I, I still like it. I, I would have liked to have seen the, the <coughs> renderings or something. If you're going to change a tower, it would have been nice to see it. Um, uh, just, just for our own, I mean, we, we, we were the ones that kind of asked for it. So it would have been nice for something to, to so that we could see that. Um, I would suggest, again, uh, on the speaker, uh, I'd love to see you incorporate a use for it other than just a branding. Um, we're having issues, obviously, as you heard, you, 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 you were here on the, on the uh, earlier meeting. If we could incorporate cell towers into something like this, then that alleviates the tower problem, the tree problem, the Otis problem, uh, and it gives them the communications or the, the the roadways that they might need, so I would I would ask you to at least look into that. Other than that, um, I like the project. I see you guys have started across the street. Looking forward to see what pops up out of the ground, and uh, um, I think you've done a nice job designing it. Commissioner Hernandez, I like the project. I think it's the, the architecture is very nice and I think that it's well thought out. Given the information that we have today, I think it's a good design. We don't know what the future holds. The, probably an obstacle that I do see is when the school traffic, when the school comes in, the traffic may impact, but I don't think it'll be greater than the other splash and dash on crossroads. Um, it moves pretty fast. I think you just loop in and loop out. You enter the, the same way and you exit the same way. So I think it's a good project. I like it. I think you guys did a good job with the design. I would like to see the water tower though. That would have been nice to see the, the updated water tower. Yes, sir. Um, I wasn't kidding about 1905. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure we're, we were incorporating 1905. Yeah. Okay, it says 1904 in the in the yeah it says 1904 in here. I hate to see you put the wrong uh, year on there. Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, can I ask the commission members um, those who are, were looking from, they would preferred to see the architectural element of the water tower. Um, would they, ra would they rather see it and approve it themselves or leave that to staff? Commissioner Seifert? I think staff does a great job of, uh, of taking these, these projects on. Um, I think they could come up with something. Um, I would have liked to have seen it tonight, but uh, uh, I, I think that uh, Ryan and her staff could probably make this decision for us. I'm not against the tower. Um, I, I, I so if they if they doll it up and you guys uh, make some recommendations I would be fine with that myself okay. Commissioner Hernandez yeah I don't think it's an item that would hold back or should hold back the project approval I think staff is that's something that staff can handle okay 
Um, from my opinion, uh, first of all, I, I appreciate all of the, we, we gave quite a few suggestions. Uh, by and large, they've uh, taken those to heart. Um, I think the, the building looks a lot uh, more cohesive with the other buildings uh, in the project than it did originally, and uh, I appreciate that. Um, the, I, I too am concerned about the traffic flow, and, um, and I'm a little bit worried that we may end up in a situation where we may have to do a fix down the road um, as more and more things go in. Um, as you take these as single elements, um, it's relatively easy to, to, to look at them and say, well, you know, it's not going to have that much of an impact. But then you add each additional element that's putting additional impact in. And, and uh, I know that there has been a staff study on it, and they say it should be fine. And I, and I just cross my fingers and hope that, uh, that, uh, it does, that that positive um, feeling about it does not fall by the wayside with, um, with their success. Quite frankly, the more successful you are, the more likely this thing is to implode as far as traffic goes. I mean, that, that just is, is a fact. You know, if you guys are tremendously successful, oops, all of a sudden there's, you know, zillions of cars. Um, addressing the, the, the water tower, um, I'm just going to say I, I don't think that the water tower should be there. I mean, I, that's just my opinion on it. I, I think that it is not architecturally appropriate to all the rest of the facilities and buildings. Um, even if you modernize it just, just a tad, I just think that um, it is uh, just, uh, just for me, it's just a bridge too far on, on that particular thing. Um, I get the fact that you want to brand, you want a branding, but I, wor I worry about the slippery slope. We, if you ran this thing through with the, with the, um, the water tower, then the next guy who has a dream of branding a Trojan horse or, or anything, uh, an image of the Eiffel Tower, whatever, is going to look to that and say, well, we can put that there because, look, you allowed this. Now, there's, there can always be reasons why this was approved and that was approved. But really, if you look at this, the reasons are strictly about branding. And there's no cohesion to this being with the car wash. I would much rather see your branding take place on your signage. You want to brand, you want to brand a, a water tower? Put a water tower on your signage. But don't build a water tower because it just looks funky, frankly, with all the other modern designs. And I don't know what type of modernization you can do to a water tower that is going to make it look anything other than a water tower that's funky in that, in that position. I mean, the more you modernize it, the more you're going to turn it into a rocket. You know, and it's, I, I don't know. It's it just, it just not right for, in my mind. Um, and, uh, and there's a lot of companies that have in the past had large branding items but little by little, as they've constructed, you know, some of them have been grandfathered in McDonald's. You see, you still see a, a fair number of those large golden arches. But the new buildings you see, those are all incorporated onto their signage because it's going to it's harder and harder for for companies to be able to get one-off things. Um, and I think it would also, just as a businessman, I, I, I think that you're you're going to see that that branding. It's got to be easier as you build more of these. Every single time, you're going to want that that thing, and it's just a it's just a hard sell. Whereas if you sell it on the on the on the signage, it's probably an easy sell. So that's my view on it. With that, anything else? We need a motion or uh, discussions or whatever it is we're going to do. Okay. I move that we approve Splash and Dash Plan Development Permit at 703 South Bradley Road. With uh, the staff modifying the... Yes, with the staff modifying number 4, 5, 7, and 27. And, and in consultation about the tower. And that they take consultation on the modernized water tower. Second. 
I second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I oppose. And uh, abstentions, no abstentions. Motion carries. Good luck, gentlemen. Good luck. Thank you. I'm Eight. pretty sure it's 19. Oral reports from the Planning Commission and staff. Yeah. Chair, Commission. <laughs> uh, staff updates, um, if I may. We do have um, a meeting scheduled, a hearing on October 2nd, and based on the results of tonight's hearing, an item continued Verizon to that hearing. Um, so far we only have three items for that hearing, so um, that's what we have upcoming. I also wanted to mention um, at City Council last night, the Council approved the Oakley Court project. Just to make you aware, your Commission just reviewed that. That's the um, zone change along the railroad. Um, it was uh, heavy industrial that went to multifamily housing, um, Oakley Court, uh, you may remember. Uh, there was discussion about the wall. Uh, the, the city council um, modified the height of the wall to an eight foot wall. And um, the remainder of the project is as the commission approved it. So that was the only modification, but it was approved at council. With, last the, H night. Which the, with the HVAC? That's correct. So just to update you, that happened. Um, there was also a discussion about uh, a tenant displacement ordinance, and we're still going to be working with the agricultural community on uh, how to address that issue as well. It's a big issue. So that is the, those are my updates. Anything else you want to see at a future study session or anything, we're happy to facilitate also trainings. Okay. okay. Commissioner Seifert. <laughs> so we're doing pretty good at that uh, shopping center um, huh. next to Yummy Donuts. Mm -hmm. But there's one signage there that, I mean, they're, 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 they've got a carpet place now. It looks good. They've got the, uh, uh, the new place that we, I forget what the name, what they call it, but they've got a new name for the, the favorite or whatever. It, it's nice. It's, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the laundromat. And I know we have a sign ordinance uh, that you're supposed to have a sign. It's not supposed to be a painted on sign. So I don't know who owns the whole building or if it's part of the same building. It seems like it must be individual because I think the last guy we saw actually owned that section of it, the old Betty's Fabric or whatever. Mm -hmm. But is there something we can do to kind of bring that signage up? I mean, it's, it's filling in and now it's gotten to the laundromat and they're the only guys with the holdout for, I don't know if that's their own property or if they're part of the other uh, deal, but it would cer certainly be nice to bring that whole thing up. It, we're so close to having a nice building there. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only thing that I saw. We'll take a look. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else, commissioners? No? Let's adjourn.